We just made this retail DIY farmhouse display wall and we'll show you how we made it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it or make it? So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're gonna do something with this giant white wall behind us. <laughs> It hasn't always been quite this empty. We did clear out a couple of things, but we haven't done much with it since we built our workshop space. It, we intended for this to be kind of a phase two project, but we weren't sure exactly what we were gonna do with it. Until we started to get a lot of visitors. We love visitors. We love when people come in and hang out with us, but they have nothing to uh, buy or do unless they're scheduled for a workshop. Right, well what we found is that folks are coming in looking to purchase signs maybe for a gift they've seen us at a local craft show or even a craft show two hours away and they wanted to come in and get another sign or they've seen us at a farmer's market and it's a weekday and they want to grab a sign but i didn't really have any retail space to display finished signs it's strictly a workshop you want to come in and paint your own sign <laughs> we got you and you might not always have time for that. <laughs> so we did build our rope shelves. If you remember when we did our initial build of our workshop space, we have our rope shelves, but they're displaying current projects that we're using in the workshop so that, hey, oh look, I love those. Can I come back and make those? But now I need a place that'll display signs that you might give as gifts. Signs that are all year round signs, or even just well, easy. Like you said, signs. you might want to come get a sign and not have to paint it yourself. I think I've got a pretty good idea of what we want to do. Go ahead. I think we should just use wire racks <laughs> with some hangers on them, just that like we is, do it at our craft booth. That's what he said. He goes, all you have to do is use those same wire shelves that I have that we use for our craft show. We'll put those graduated racks on them like you would see mm -hmm. at a retail, like a clothing store, yeah. and we'll hang instead them on of, that. Instead of shirts, we're selling signs. And I was you like, wear no, no, that is way too corporate. We want something that's a little more rustic, a little more sticking with our farmhouse DIY theme. A little handmade looking. Yes, yes. A little rustic, look like we just peeled some boards off of a barn. Yes, so, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's what I think I've got. I have a vision in my head. We have the supplies and we're ready to build this wall and make it look like a fun, kind of rustic retail space. Fun, rustic retail space. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. I thought we had a pretty precise shopping list. <laughs> we did, we did. I was like, Garrett, Come with me to Lowe's, it'll be real quick, 30 minutes, we're in, we're out. We knew we needed 32 one by sixes, six one by four furring strips, some nails and that's it. Now, hour and a half later, we've added one by sixes to the cart, added one by fours to the cart, changed those out, found the furring strips, decided that the one by sixes are too heavy. I was like, let's use this quarter inch ply and we'll rip it down. Then I decided the quarter inch ply well, was too light. we loaded five of those into the cart. Yeah, loaded then those unloaded in. unloaded five of those out of the cart. <laughs> Found the three eighths and felt like that was better. So we loaded those into the cart. Hour and a half later, we're in one aisle and we finally make it to the registers. <laughs> yeah, it was a very long aisle. <laughs> very long aisle. A lot of... It's a lot of... I will... A lot, you of, know, sometimes, a lot of project changes in that 90 minutes. Well, so. you know what? I was, I was enhancing the project. I was tweaking the design. <laughs> yeah, on the fly, tweaking the design it, on improving, the fly. Improving the, the design. That's, That's right. really what I was doing. I just decided that the one by sixes were gonna be Too overkill. Yeah. yeah, they were heavy and they were thick and they were just gonna be a bit much for this wall. Too much. Border ridge. Too little, freaking, too flimsy. I was Goldilocks. Yeah, was she was like... Goldilocks in the wood aisle. <laughs> I was, but I finally settled on 3 8 inch and I think that's what we're going with. Well, I know that's what we're going with because that's what we purchased. <laughs> so we got five sheets of 3 8 inch pine plywood. Then we got 11 one by four furring strips. We got some two inch self-tapping screws, some one inch self-tapping screws. Then we'll need some stain and paint. See, it was easy. Yeah, it was easy. <laughs> Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. We don't need to touch the one by four furring strips at all. We're just gonna put those up at eight foot. But we do need to rip a whole bunch of five and a half inch wide 
plywood strips. <laughs> so I'm gonna stack all of the plywood together. I'm gonna try to get them all lined up nice and neat using a picket and a hammer, just tapping around, getting all of the little boards lined up. Then I'm gonna pin them all together using those two inch screws that we got before. Those two inch self-tapping screws, I'm gonna put one in each corner and then one in the middle on each side. That should hold it while I try to cut them all at the same time. We wanted all of these boards to be five and a half inches wide and the guard on my circular saw is an inch and a half. So we measured seven inches from the edge. We marked the line. We put one of the one by four furring strips on there. Line that up with our marks that we just made. And then I'm gonna screw that in so it shouldn't move. I can't clamp all of these. So I screwed that top piece in. Now I'm just gonna run down with the circular saw it took me like two or three passes to get through each of them. I couldn't set the blade depth all the way and get through all sheets at one time. So it did take me a couple of passes to get through all of them each time. But that worked a lot better than I thought it would. I mean, it was much more efficient by stacking them all. Yeah. We were able to get through all of those cuts in... I don't know, 30 minutes. It took me 30 minutes to make all of the cuts. That's with lining up all the boards and everything. So not too bad. Once I had them all ripped down to five and a half inches, I then took 16 and we cut 16 of those down to 88 inches. And then 16 of those we cut down to 85 inches. That way they'll fit on one side of the wall and they'll fit on the other side of the wall. Step three, it's time to stain. There is a ton of staining to do. Now that we have it all cut and laid out, I am a little stain intimidated. Well, you know that Garrett really doesn't do the painting and the staining. But I have to so. watch and that's agony. <laughs> well, he helped this time. There was a lot to do here. So we jumped in, we used our stain sponge along with our Varathane's Briar Smoke Stain. We use this a lot. I just think it's a great color. We put that on everything. Oh, we do. It is our Frank's Red Hot. So we use our sponge and the sponge works great. These boards are a little rough because they are unfinished plywood, but we ultimately determined that a sponge roller in the stain was pretty much faster. I yeah, thought at it first it was putting too much stain down. But I think it coated faster. And then as yes. you wiped it off, it kind of filled in the cracks and got nooks and crannies. So we had to stain each, we had to roll the stain on all of these, either stain it, roll it and sponge it. I think we roll were using both methods. Both, yeah. And then wipe it on, turn around, wipe it off. And we'll stain on, stain off. Yes, get each of the sides. It was a lot of work here. I'm right-handed and my arm was burning, burning. I, I could try to do it left-handed, but I'm not quite that coordinated. So I just had to keep toughing it out with that right arm. And then we had a process going, so you couldn't stop halfway through no stop, and right? mixing it up. Yeah, you had, to, you had to just stick with it and get it done. Take a break, champ. Take a break. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> Step four. Time to paint, but not with a paintbrush, <laughs> with a tape knife. So this is a technique we've shown before, but it is a great way to keep that distressed look and quickly paint. Quickly paint. All of these boards. We did all 32 boards in, le in about an hour. Maybe it was just over an hour, but really this method of just applying the paint to the board and using the scraping knife or this tape knife and pulling the paint down across the boards worked it, gr great. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It just leaves the paint in those little dips, nooks, and crannies, and then done. Time to go dry. Yeah. We did have a process. We put them in front of a fan for a minute, and then we would go set them aside. Yeah, it was a great way to give it that distressed look without having to do all of that sanding. to attach the furring strips to the wall. We're gonna use some two inch self-tapping screws and my drill. But first we need to find the studs 
So Kim's gonna find the studs because every time I touch that tool, the thing just goes crazy. Yeah, he doesn't. I can't. He's tell. not friends with the. It just stud goes binder. off. It goes off every time I touch it. And these are. This is a commercial building, so these are metal studs. These self-tapping screws work for metal and wood. Step six, time to attach the slats. We're gonna attach these slats to the furring strips that are on the board with some one inch self-tapping screws. And we're gonna use a piece of picket as a spacer in between each. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up using the spacer. Seven. Now we have the accents. We're gonna hang all of our signs on the board using these little hooks that we found on Amazon. So the big sign will go over the board and then we'll hang, hang like this. But Kim's gotta fluff all the bows and do all the fluffing and stuff. And organize them, right? And organize them. think came out pretty good right yeah I think so I think it came out excellent and it was a lot easier than I thought it would be so that's also a bonus well and I love that it's completely configurable so I have all the signs up here right now but I don't necessarily have to hang the signs up here I could do any other farmhouse like signs any configuration and i can move them around because they won't be permanently attached to the wall <laughs> yeah we could add baskets we could even have shelves you all using those little hooks so yeah, yeah i think that is great yeah i'm really excited about it i also think our patrons are great big thanks to all of our patrons we know we look you know we love you guys and uh we're having a patron zoom call this week yeah, or Wednesday, this Wednesday. upcoming Wednesday. Upcoming yeah, Wednesday, yeah, I Wednesday love those. of the month. Let's see how many people we can get on that one. I love talking to you guys. Uh, we are about out of time, so if you're not gonna join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. Oh, and don't forget about Test Cut Tuesdays, where we usually test out a new design, try to paint it, put it together, see how it looks, see if it works. All right, seriously, I gotta go. Too bad.